There have been some gallops on the Rowley Mile, and we're going to show you them now. We've got four sets of gallops to take you through. We are going to start with a Carl Burke trio. Martin Dwyer with the studio to talk over this with you. We've got uh, Jackson Street, Flight Plan, and Knight Rado, who's quite prominent in the market uh, for the 2,000 guineas after winning a couple of times at Southern, impressively. And Knight Rado, the three-year-old, is in the white cap at the back. Flight Plan is um, an interesting horse here, isn't he? Um, with the white body, for he's entered in the lock hinge, Martin. Yeah, he was a uh, winner at Leopard's Town of a Group 2 last season. Um, so. We'll, we'll get a good look at how good Night Raider is here, won't we? Because uh, he was unbeaten in two races at Suttle and uh, by wide, wide margins, and uh, looks like he could be pretty good. And he's travelling pretty well in behind there. So yeah. that is uh, flight plan in the white in the uh, white colours, isn't it? In the white body, and then you've got in behind held up Night Raider and Danny Tudhope's on Night Raider. Yeah. Flight plan Sam James and the other horse is Jackson Street, a 676 rated horse. They're they're four year old, and Night Raider on the outside is a three year old. And he's basically he's here. This is his prep run for the Guineas, isn't it? A prep gallop for the Guineas, and to get a feel for the track as well, Martin. Yeah, absolutely. And it does no harm to come down a dip, but he looks to be working quite nicely. I mean, he's working with a Group Two winner. Yeah. And he's um, he's, he's and he's a, a, a year younger as well. So. Yeah, he's not being put under pressure there, but he's just moved up sides and stretched away. The one thing you can take from that, he looks great. And um, he's handled the dip well. He seemed to handle the track fine, didn't he? He haven't gone at racing pace, but he's, um, he's, he's experienced the dip and he looks to cope with it well. Yeah, that was a nice effort, wasn't it, from uh, Knight Raider in that uh, little prep gallop for the 2000 Guineas. Carl Burke, I'm sure, will be pleased with that. Knight Raider, who's won a couple of times at Southall, and he galloped with Flight Pan and Jackson Street, is in the 2000 Guineas. What did you make of that? We were very happy with him. I mean, um, the idea for him was to come for experience. I mean, he's fairly fit as he's had a couple of recent runs. He's, to me, he's definitely a Group 1 horse in the making. But that was his first gallop on grass. I mean, he might have had a, a little bit early on in his two-year-old career, but then he picked up an injury, and by the time he came back, you know, all his work's been on poly track. So um, we needed to get him here to just have a look at the track, and we were very happy. The key to the, to the gallop will be how flight plan if he runs next week how he runs i mean sam james who's ridden flight plan quite a bit at home and ridden work with that they work together quite a bit he was very happy with flight plan right so if he runs well we'll we'll that'll boost our confidence interesting insight and danny was on board night radio what did he say he was very happy with him i i wouldn't have minded if danny had given a bit more of a squeeze up the hill just to stretch away but he thought he'd done enough, and he said he probably got there plenty early enough as well. He's a bit green when he hit the front, okay. but, he, but he's got a high cruising speed. He's a very good horse in the making. Let's have a look at some uh, Charlie Hill's uh, trained horses now. They were next onto the uh, track at Newmarket, and uh, you've got Iberian and Tom Marcand. That's uh, the white breech is just taking a turn now. You've got Vainor and Michael Hills, and you've got Maglark and uh, Tony Clark. I think it's Maglark who's leading of course these gallops you, you don't want to sort of want to read too much into them because they tend to just go steady don't they martin but um well i'm not sure you could call this a gallop because they are literally they're trotting. crawling aren't they this is what i mean uh, you, you can't read too much into these into these workouts but it's um it's a notification of well-being more than anything isn't it yeah you take what you can from it the trainer sets up these gallops and he knows what he wants to see he knows how much work he's done with his horses and Sometimes they need more and, and, and they ask the jockeys or work riders to kick on, make it a stretch, but I'm guessing Charlie Hills has decided just don't go crazy and build into it. And the two horses in front of uh, Iberia in the rated 83 and 86. Um, Vainor is a mile and a half winner mm. off, off 83 and uh, Maglark is an 86 rated horse who's won over a mile and a quarter. So, um, yeah. But they're older horses, Iberian I suppose. Well, he's in the Guineas, isn't he? He's in the yeah. Guineas and he's in the Irish Guineas. So we've seen Knight Raider, who's in the Guineas. This is a, another horse who might turn up. And he's getting a feel for the track as well, Iberian. Um, he's had a few runs um, in his career. He's kept pretty busy last season. He wasn't disgraced in the Dewhurst. He finished sixth to uh, City of Troy. He, wasn't, he was beaten a fair way, but he wasn't completely disgraced. No. He did look like a horse that would improve between two and three and physically I mean he's looming up on the outside now but physically he looks like he's done well he's strengthened up he's quickening nicely there he's really grabbing at the ground but they've gone very steady and these are mile yeah, and a half excellent. horses he's working with but the trainer 
knows what he wants and uh, the horse will benefit from that but it wasn't a flat out gallop. No, he's had a nice toe to the two furlong pole then just been asked to stretch and uh, to handle the track which he seemed to do uh, absolutely fine. I found Charles Hill sheltering from the rain which is currently belting down here at Newmarket and unfortunately that made him vulnerable to an interview about the Iberian after his gallop earlier with a couple of stable companions. How did it go? Um, yeah very very happy with him. Uh, you know, we were sort of toying with the idea of running him in the green and uh, just felt the ground probably wasn't going to be ideal for him. So we decided to come down this route instead. And uh, I think uh, what happened today, we, you know, was what I wanted to achieve and it sort of should put us in the right, uh, right frame of mind really for a couple of weeks' time. Who was on board him for the gallop today? Uh, Tom Aquan rode him. He rode him his uh, last couple of runs last year and obviously won the Champagne Stakes uh, and things didn't go quite right uh, for him in the Dewhurst that day with the I think it's just a combination of very very uh, testing ground with the track he just um, just hit every ridge and got unbalanced up at, you know, through the race and never really got up the hill so you know that was another reason to come here just to try on better ground to see whether we could come back here for the 2000 guineas. And what was Tom's report on that? Uh, he was delighted with it, you know, everything went very smoothly. Uh, he's an amazing uh, workhorse at home. Um, you know, he could just destroy horses in, in two strides. So, uh, you know, I just didn't want to keep working at home. I just didn't want to get him a race course gallop. But, you know, went over a mile today, so just to get him in a good rhythm and uh, just to see whether a mile would suit him, you know, because he does show so much speed, you know, you, you could bring him back. But, you know, he's out of a high chaparral mare by Lupe de Vega, so there's no reason why a mile shouldn't be in his um, comfort zone. Yeah, and having won a champagne, you've got to give the Guinness a go, haven't you? Oh, 100%. You know, he's beaten two Group 1 horses there, but we're behind him that mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he's got great form. And look, there's only one sort of English 2000 Guinness, isn't there? Absolutely. And you've been pleased, it sounds like, with how he's done over the winter. Has he strengthened, strengthened and put on weight? Yeah, you know, he's, he, you see, he's, he's such an athletic horse. Um, he's not the tallest of horses, but he's... He's all there, uh, and uh, he's he's filled out. You know, pr he's probably grown a little bit, but he's 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 all there, and uh, he's a very well balanced horse. Uh, let's move on and have a look at Fallen Angel. Uh, she had a gallop as well uh, for the Carl Burke team. She had uh, a gallop with Lethal Levi. Now we all know Lethal Levi is a good sprinter, uh, a fast horse. Lethal Levi and uh, Fallen Angel, the black jacket, white cap, just um, having a stretch him up, almost upsides at this point. Yeah, she's, um, she's shown what she needs to show on the track already, so I'm guessing yeah. um, Carl didn't want a prep run, she goes straight for the guineas, so she's come here to, to have a little bit of a blowout, working with a six furlong winner, um, Lethal Levi, she's rated 92, Yeah. decent lead horse, they've gone a nice clip and she's just changed the legs there in a dip and Danny's asking her to pick up, so I, I, I guess of the three gallops we've seen, this has been the most searching gallop or they've done the most work mm. but this is a horse going for a guineas without a prep yeah so i'm guessing that's what they've wanted and she's worked with a with, with a really good um lead horse rated uh, 92. yeah well she, she's already a great one winner isn't she she won the moiler exactly so she doesn't need to prove it on the no. track Carl obviously just wants her to have a day out and sometimes put a horse in the horse box and drive from home yeah and give them a day out is as good as anything because they'll have spent a long winter at home and it kind of can just wake them up a little bit and get them ready for the first weekend. Uh, Fallen Angel, the filly, worked with Lethal Levi. How did that go? Yeah, very happy again. Um, if anything, Danny was even more happy with her than he was uh, with the colt. But she's a horse that, she, she, like Danny came in and said, she needs that smack behind the saddle just to wake her up and go. She only just does what you ask her. And if you go back and watch the Moigle, you know, she looked beat and uh, away she went again. And, and, and he said she was just waiting for the other horse there. So he, he was delighted with her. For her, it was fitness, you know. She, she needed to come for the fitness and she'll need another gallop at home, which she'll get probably a week on Friday. And then um, hopefully we're all set for the Guinness. And how far do you think she might stay? Interesting one. She'll see the mile out really well. Wouldn't surprise me to see her at mile and a quarter, whether she gets a mile and a half, I don't know. The pedigree's a little bit mixed, but... Um, but they all get better as they get older, that family, you know, on the dam side and on the, on the, cult, on the two down hot side as well. So she's a high class filly. She's a very high class filly. There's one more to have a look at, which is Al Yanabi. He'll be going for the 2000 guineas, uh, you would have thought. Uh, and Nick was able to watch this gallop with Al Yanabi's trainer, Owen Burrows. 
All right, and the other worker was El Yanabi. Owen Burrows trains the horse. Owen was second in the Guineas with Massa a few years ago. Uh, Owen, how happy were you with this work, and who did he work with? What did he do? So, yeah, we're pleased. Um, he worked with uh, a Shadwell older horse who is predominantly kept in training as a lead horse. He led. Uh, then there's uh, three-year-old Zoo Star Colt of Sheikh Ahmed's was second. He only had one start last year and one at Kempton. Um, that was over six. I'm not sure if he's an out-and-out -out sprinter, but he, he's a six, seven furlong horse. Um, and, yeah, they, they finished upsides at the end. Uh, yeah, pleasing work. OK, and what did you ask the rider of El Yanavi to do? So, look, he sat third of the group, uh, settled well. That was encouraging because he, you know, he can just have a, uh, a little bite of the bit, but he was, he was very relaxed. Um, and, you know, they went and joined sort of just about the three and then picked up the lead horse. And, you know, it wasn't, wasn't anything too serious, but, uh, you know, made sure they had a blow. Um, and Jim just said, it, you know, when he hit the rising ground, that was he was going... Bet, you know, never better than when he hit the line, you know, so they work seven, um, so he will, he will appreciate the mile. OK, and straight to the Guineas now? Yes, I think so, yeah, all being well. Thanks to Aaron Barris for, for joining Nick to take us through that gallop of his uh, three-year-old Al Yanabi. He'll be off to the 2000 Guineas now. Uh, after that, hope you enjoyed uh, looking at uh, some of those classic prospects just uh, stretching their legs on the Rolly Mile earlier on today. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.